from Waterford and on Garvin. This is Waterford at One. News. Good afternoon, I'm Emer McKeown. Today's top stories, Minister of State John Paul Phelan says Worshford councillors need to look at not-so-obvious ways to fund their budget deficit. Police in New Zealand don't believe there are any more survivors after a volcano erupted on an island. The smoky coal ban is reportedly being extended to Tremor. And in sport, Johnny Sexton's been ruled out of Leinster's upcoming game this weekend against Northampton. Minister of State John Paul Phelan says Worshford Council needs to dig down to fund its 1.3 million euro budget deficit. The minister says he's given the local authority one third of his discretionary funding and there will be no more allocations this year. Worshford Council received an extra €2 million Euro in recent weeks to offset the revaluation of Irish washer rates. It's the only local authority in the country that has yet to pass its budget this year and councillors are due to meet again on Thursday. Speaking to Damien Tiernan on Dacia Today, Minister Phelan says councillors need to look at not-so-obvious ways to bridge the gap. Councillors, I suppose, have to have to dig down into the figures a bit and not always, you know, fall for the, the some of the easy options and the low-hanging fruit to lose, use that awful phrase that sometimes can be put out there as, as solutions. I mean, often I find the work that councils do uh, that's most important in communities isn't, you know, big grant allocations. It's small supports for local festivals or local events that are happening. Um, and often that's one of the first things that's on the list for a cut. Five people have been killed and more are missing after a volcano erupted off the coast of New Zealand. Police now say they don't believe there are any survivors on the island. 18 others have been removed from White Island, with some having suffered severe burns. Laura Donnelly reports. The site is currently considered too dangerous for police and rescuers to search for those still missing. Deputy Police Commissioner John Tim says rescuers are currently unable to gain access. The island is unstable. Uh, There's possibilities of further eruptions, but actually the physical environment is unsafe for us to return to the island. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. I know there will be a huge uh, amount of concern and anxiety for those who have loved ones on or around the island at the time. Uh, And I can assure them police are doing everything uh, they can. Skydiver Tristan Webb was mid-jump nearby when the eruption happened. Within around about five seconds of exiting the aircraft, you could see the plume of smoke was just beginning to almost envelop the island. It was very rapid. It was very fast. Our freefall time lasts for around about 45 seconds, and in that time, it had grown significantly. It was absolutely massive. Nobody lives on the island, but it's said to be a popular spot for tourists. The operators of a wind farm in County Worshford have been ordered by the High Court to put nine turbines into standby mode from today. Barnafadoc Wind Farm in Ballyduff was found to be in breach of planning rules earlier this year due to operating with longer blade lengths than allowed. The operators initiated High Court proceedings over on board Planala's decision. Mr Justice Garrett Simon said he wished to give the operators an opportunity to regularise the planning status of their turbines so that they comply with EU law. Fianna Fáil councillor James Tobin says the operators now have to return to Worshford Council. The operator now has to come back again. Having withdrawn the application for retention, which was surprising, they now have to come back in. And it's a matter for the planning department now of Waterford Council. It's going to be interesting now to know what do they do. But one thing we will make sure of is that they will extend them down. The smoky coal ban is reportedly being extended to Tremor. According to the Irish Times, Minister for Climate Action Richard Bruton will announce before Christmas that the burning of smoky coal will be prohibited in 13 more towns. Currently, the ban is in place in Worshford City, but not the county. The paper also reports that the government is backing away from a nationwide ban as coal firms from outside the state have threatened legal action. Green Party councillor Marco Kohasik says the existing bans aren't being enforced. There's a big problem even let's say in Morsford City where those rules are being flouted there's smoke free coal on sale alongside regular coal the regular coal is cheaper and there's a lot of people opting to go with that so that's why rather than designating towns we need to have a nationwide ban on smoky fuel otherwise people will just drive out the road to whatever garage is selling their their regular Polish coal buy what they want and drive back in again 
The top floor of the new wing at University Hospital Washford will be open from today. The five-storey Dunmore wing was handed over to the HSC in April. The moving of Medical Forward got underway this morning. Consultant medical oncologist Paula Calvert told Damien Tiernan on Data Today that it's a tremendous step forward for cancer patients. This is a purpose-built facility. We're just moving to the fifth the ward on the fifth floor, but it's a much more fit-for-purpose environment for our oncology and hematology patients. When it's fully open, it'll be 24 single rooms up on the fifth floor, the beautiful view over the whole of Waterford and the river. It's a bright and fresh and clean space, and it'll be a much nicer environment for patients who are sick with cancer. The Irish Farmers Association says they'll continue to stage protests until there's a substantial increase in beef prices. The latest 12-hour blockade is taking place outside Tesco's main distribution centre in Donabate, North County, Dublin. The company says it supports the work of the Beef Market Task Force to resolve the row over cattle prices. These protesters say the current rate isn't sustainable. We've had enough of it. We're not going to sit down and take this anymore. And as long as the protests have to go on, they will go on. The abuse of farmers is over. Enough is enough. We have to stand up for our rights and make sure that that everybody is going to get a fair fair day's wages for a fair day's work. We can't take this level of price at all. That's why we're still here. That's why we're still protesting. West Washford's migrant communities are coming together together to raise money for the homeless. Food from the Four Corners takes place in the Creamery Cafe in Dungarvan Hostel tomorrow evening at 7pm. Traditional cuisine from various countries and cultures will be on offer and all money raised will go to South East Simon, Focus Ireland and the Peter McFerry Trust. Susie from Hungary says they want to give back to the Irish community. I came to Ireland seven years ago with a plan just to stay for a year, learn the language, but I was so welcomed and, and by the Irish uh, communities. So I I would like to give back in a way I can and actually after seven years now it feels like I'm home so I would like to support people in a crisis. Mohammed from Syria, Syria lives in Clone Emergency Reception and Orientation Centre. He'll be cooking a dish from his country. So we'll make Syrian food and uh, his name Raisa Bazalia and it's a nice dish and so I hope so everybody will come and enjoy it. Mosher is travelling through Dungarvan for the next fortnight, should expect delays in the evenings and overnight from tonight. Road surfacing works on the N25 bypass will take place from 7pm to 7am, Monday to Friday, until the 21st of December. WLR Sport. Very good afternoon, I'm Gavin Whelan. Starting with some breaking rugby news and Johnny Sexton has been ruled out of Leinster's opening upcoming game this weekend against Northampton. The province gave a full injury update today and said that he'll need further assessment and to see a specialist for a further scan on the D injury he picked up in their victory this weekend. They also updated on Joe Tuman who was re re-aggravated a hamstring issue and will be out for six to eight weeks. Rory O'Loughlin meanwhile will continue his rehab following a shoulder injury. James Ryan was removed in the second half against Northampton with a head injury. He will follow the graduated return to play protocols under medic supervision. Russell Rovers won their first Munster Junior Hurling title yesterday after a 2-13 to 11 points win over Waterford champion St Mary's in Farrar Field. Man of the match Josh Bozang scored 1-8 including a first minute goal while Brian Harnett raised a second a green flag eight minutes from the end. Owen Kearns finished as top scorers for St Mary's with 7.6 coming from Freeze. He was disappointed at the full-time whistle and said that they needed to be further in front at half-time having played with the elements in the opening period. Oh, definitely, definitely. That, that, that brief was, was, uh, was fierce and we, we knew we probably had to be seven or eight, five or six at least ahead at half-time and it just it just didn't happen for us today. Yeah. But they're, 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 they're a serious team and best luck to them. 2007 Hurler of the Year Dan Shanahan will train the Waterford Senior Camogie team next season. New manager Fergal O'Brien has added the Liz Mormon to his backroom set up for 2020. The two of them previously worked together under Derek McGrath with the Waterford Senior Hurlers. O'Brien's management team also contains selector Pauline Cunningham, Dr Sinead Fitzpatrick, physio Kenny Murphy and nutritionist Arthur Dunn. Exciting times for the Daisha Camogie team in 2020. Next to news of uh, Russia have been banned from competing at, next Olymp- at the next Olympic Games 
and FIFA World Cup. The World Anti-Doping Agency have imposed a four-year suspension on the country's participation at major worldwide sporting events. They've been punished for tampering with data linked to positive doping tests. The Russia Athletics Federation have previously been banned from the 2016 Rio Olympics, but WADA have recently reinstalled their anti-doping body before the latest tampering revelations. Despite the ban, the Russian football team will be allowed to compete at Euro 2020, for which they are one of the host nations. They have 21 days to appeal the ban to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Arsenal will be hoping to snap their winless run tonight. The Gunners have gone nine games without a victory, their worst run since 1977, and have picked up just one point under caretaker boss Freddie Lumberg. They can climb back into the top half of the table this evening if they get the better of a West Ham side, who are also in a desperate run of form. The Hammers have just one win from their last nine top flight games and sit just a point above the relegation zone. But manager Manuel Pellegrini insists he's not feeling any additional strain. I think that the pressure, at least for me, is always in every game to try to do it better, to try to play well and to try to win the game. You don't need to be in a bad position or you don't need to be uh, without uh, winning five or six games to start feeling the pressure. And that one kicks off at the London Stadium at 8pm tonight. That's the latest on WLR, our next bulletin, too. Happy